This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at calculating cell potential. So let's start with a definition. The cell potential is the measure of potential difference in volts between two half cells in a voltaic cell. So here we have an example of a voltaic cell made from a zinc half cell and a copper half cell. When connected via a salt bridge and an external circuit, the electrons flow from the zinc half cell to the copper half cell. This makes the zinc half cell the anode and the copper half cell the cathode. Using the standard electropotential values of each half cell, we can calculate the cell potential, which is the voltage produced by the voltaic cell. So here we have the equation used to calculate the cell potential. The cell potential is equal to the standard electropotential value of the half cell that undergoes reduction, minus the standard electropotential value of the half cell that undergoes oxidation. Another way of writing this equation is the standard electropotential value of the cathode minus the standard electropotential value of the anode. The reason we can use either equation is that reduction takes place at the cathode and oxidation takes place at the anode. Next, we'll have a quick review of standard electropotentials. In this table, we have standard electropotentials for a variety of half cells. The first thing we note is that these are written for the reduction reaction. Another point to note is that because voltage is an intensive property, these values are not multiplied according to the stoichiometry of the equation. In other words, we use them exactly as they are shown in the table. When connecting two half cells in a voltaic cell, the half cell with the more negative standard electropotential will be the anode, and the half cell with the more positive standard electropotential will be the cathode. For example, if a voltaic cell is made with a zinc half cell and a copper half cell, the zinc half cell will be the anode and the copper half cell will be the cathode. So next we look at how to use these values to calculate the cell potential. So in our first example, we'll calculate the cell potential for this voltaic cell. And here we have the standard electropotential values of the zinc half cell and the copper half cell. We then input the values into this equation. The copper half cell has the more positive standard electropotential value, so it undergoes reduction. In other words, it will be the cathode. And the zinc half cell has the more negative standard electropotential value, so it will undergo oxidation. In other words, it will be the anode. And here we have the cell potential for this voltaic cell, which is positive 1.10 volts. As we'll see later, the positive sign tells us that this is a spontaneous reaction. In our next example, we'll calculate the cell potential for a voltaic cell made from a magnesium half cell and an iron half cell. Here we have the standard electropotential values for both half cells. The magnesium half cell with its more negative standard electropotential value will be the anode, and the iron half cell with its less negative standard electropotential value will be the cathode. So once again, we'll use this equation to calculate the cell potential, which is negative 0.45 minus negative 2.37. And this gives us a cell potential of positive 1.92 volts. Once again, we see the positive sign, which tells us that this is a spontaneous reaction. In our next example, we will calculate the cell potential for this reaction. If we look at the oxidation states, we can see that the manganese is being oxidized and the nickel ions are being reduced. So next, we'll use the standard electropotential values to calculate the cell potential. So from the equation, the nickel ions are undergoing reduction and the manganese is undergoing oxidation. So the cell potential is negative 0.26 minus negative 1.18. And this gives us a cell potential of positive 0.92 volts, which tells us the reaction is spontaneous. So to end the video, we we'll look at spontaneity. Here we have the overall equations for the three reactions we've looked at so far. Note that for each reaction, the cell potential is positive. This tells us that each reaction is spontaneous. It's also worth noting that for a voltaic cell, the cell potential will always be positive. This is because voltaic cells involve spontaneous redox reactions. In this slide, we can see the reverse reactions of the one shown in the previous slide. If we look at the cell potential values, we can see that they are numerically the same, but the sign has changed from positive to negative. 
A negative cell potential value means the reaction is non-spontaneous. So each of these reactions shown are non-spontaneous. So to summarize, a positive cell potential value means the reaction is spontaneous. And the reverse reaction will have a negative cell potential value and therefore be non-spontaneous. So that's all from this video. In the next video, we'll look at the relationship between cell potential and Gibbs free energy.